The Earth is under a weather watch tonight, a space weather watch. Yeah, Fox News' Rocky Madden joins us now from Forest Park to show us why this is so important. Also in New Jersey, mystery booms. Residents and police in one community want to know what and who are behind a series of extremely loud noises that sound like explosions. And they've been rattling a lot of people in town for weeks now. Good morning guys, uh, I got some trending news this morning and we're starting with this story that was in the Jerusalem Post that is now being picked up and broadcast all over the place. It's been trending on Twitter since it was posted and uh, we'll just get into it here. The story quotes the former head of Israel's space program. That's according to Israel's former space security chief. In an interview with an Israeli newspaper, he said the aliens have been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will understand in general what space and spaceships are. Meet Haim Eshet. Reports claim he was once the head of Israel's space security program. The man recently gave an interview to an Israeli newspaper. What he said was out of the world, quite literally. He said aliens not only exist, but have also made contact with humanity. That should be great news. Well, this is quite a story, and it comes from the man who headed Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years. Chaim Eshed is making the extraordinary claim that the United States and Israel have been in contact with a group of aliens for years, not immigrants, but extraterrestrials. Listen up, all you believers. Two classified Pentagon reports on UFOs have been revealed, including a newly leaked photo. Here it is, showing what the pilot described as a silver object found hovering above the Atlantic Ocean. And if you zoom in, it appears to be some sort of triangular object. The report reportedly could not rule out alien or non-human technology. Now, here's where it gets really weird. There is some speculation that some UFOs are able to move through the air and underwater what? the possibility that aliens are operating beneath the ocean you know what they say jeff that we know more about the moon and outer space than we know about our own ocean all right before we jump into earth's forecast let's stay on the subject of space because north carolina has a long shot the next two nights to see some auroras. And it started earlier this week when a giant solar flare or a coronal mass ejection came from the sun headed for our planet. But it appears for the next few years, the sun is going to be making lots of news. Excited because it's, a, it, it's, been, a, it's been a quiet, a long quiet time the last three to four years. Scientists watched as a solar flare exploded from the sun just two days ago. They believe we can now expect geomagnetic storms from the sun in the future, and they should peak in 2025. Experts say all that solar activity has the potential of causing voltage irregularities, even blackouts for power companies like happened in 1989 in Canada. Well, we turn now to a new book that explores what scientists call the sixth extinction, the massive dying off of animal and plant life that is happening today. Up to 50% of all living species are in danger of disappearing by the end of the century. The figures are staggering. She writes, quote, it's estimated that one third of all reef building corals, a third of all freshwater mollusks, a third of sharks and rays, a quarter of all mammals, a fifth of all reptiles, and a sixth of all birds are headed toward oblivion. The losses are occurring all over in the South Pacific and in the North Atlantic, in the Arctic and the Sahel, in lakes and on islands, on mountaintops and in valleys. Um, to say the least, a chilling title, The Sixth Extinction. So take it forward. What does that mean exactly? Well, as Aaron mentioned, there have been you know, five previous, I guess we call them major mass extinctions, because I should say they're sort of an oxymoron. You can also have a minor mass extinction, but five major ones that we see in the fossil record. 
Now let's turn to Australia, where experts say that one of the country's most iconic animals, the koala, is living on the brink. And we saw the awful images of the koalas with the little burnt paws after the bushfires. How endangered are they? So they are endangered in the way that um, you know they're losing their habitats and they are not coping with heat wave, even less obviously with fire. Um, so they are declining across most of their range. And um, the sad reality is that many more other species are declining even more than the koala. So it's kind of a, a trend that we see across all animals at the moment. Um, and his theory was that animals only went extinct in these catastrophic waves. You know, something happened, the planet changed. Otherwise, why else would they go extinct? And then <clears throat> a, a, a naturalist named Charles Lyle, who is Charles Darwin's mentor, came along and he said, that's ridiculous. You know, we never see these catastrophes. They don't happen. Only The only way the Earth changes is very, very, very gradually. And things go extinct very gradually and the world changes very gradually. And that became sort of the doctrine for a very long time, over 100 years, until the Alvarezes came along and identified an asteroid impact uh, as the event that had done in the dinosaurs and many other creatures, I should say. The dinosaurs always get top billing, but they, that extinction event did in a lot of other groups as well. <clears throat> that was resisted, that theory was resisted, uh, but it was proved, and now uh, the sort of general theory is, you know, yes, the Earth changes very slowly except for these extraordinary moments. And I'd say the whole point of the, writing the book uh, is that we are in one of those moments right now. We live out here because it's quiet. They say it's disturbing the peace and quiet that people in Mullica Township are used to. Oh, my God. Yes, um, I just heard a really loud bang, like it shook the entire house. Over the past month, police have gotten numerous 911 calls. There was just a tremendous explosion nearby. From folks hearing extremely loud noises that sound like explosions. It's been happening once a week. I mean, it, it's almost blowing our houses off the foundation. Over the weekend, they were so close to my house that it made us uneasy. That just something's not right. A little bit between a shotgun and a cannon. It just sounds like it's a bomb dropped from a plane. The repetition was just seconds apart. It just was, quite, it was it just put questions in my head. We're, you know, are we being invaded or <laughs> that kind of thing. It's, that's, that's how severe it was. Exactly. They're living in the center of Earth, just like they're living in the center of the moon. moon. He thinks they're in the moon. Oh, uh, Jeff has his candy shells. He thinks the theory. moon's inside He's out. He's not going to let go of that. Is I he? like it. I think we have a lot to learn when it comes to alien life. I think they, it's all been classified for a reason. I think it's drip dripping out. Though. I think drip most people out. know. I think most people think there are. We're starting to. I think we know the tip of the iceberg, bro. All right. Okay. All right. I know we're at a frat bar. Let me turn my hat backwards. Whoa. Play some darts. Okay. Beer pong. <laughs> I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. Since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. You know, that wasn't my forte. But we started seeing things. And once you've seen something, you get addicted to it. You want to see more and more and more. I was born and raised in the Denver area. From the time I moved here, all I heard were UFO stories from the locals. And I just giggle and say, we need a UFO watchtower, never thinking I would ever do it. It's phenomenal at night. You can see every star in the sky. They've had documented sightings in this valley since the 1500s. There are more sightings here per capita than any place else in the world. Now why they're coming here, we don't know. I've seen 29. The closest one was between here in the mountains and part way down. I call the cigar shaped. It was narrow, really long, and it went zip like that. It was 11 o'clock at night. We had over a dozen people here. Everybody saw it.
A bizarre sighting for football fans during Sunday night's game between the New Orleans Saints and the Indianapolis Colts. An NBC sports camera caught what seems to be a UFO in a beauty shot coming back from a commercial break. When the video is slowed down, what looks like some sort of lit up object can be seen in the sky behind New Orleans St. Louis Cathedral. Now, we'll let you decide whether this counts as a UFO sighting, but the mystery remains as to what those lights actually were. Now, this former head of a branch of Israel's defense ministry is 87. He was very well respected, at least until now. And he said all this in an interview with an Israeli newspaper in Hebrew, but it's really taken off after parts of it were published in English by the Jerusalem Post today. He says he's come forward now in the hope that his news will be accepted as true. He notes that if he'd made these claims five years ago, he would have been hospitalized, but now he says, I've got nothing to lose. Well, so far, President Trump has not tweeted about this, though remember a year ago, he did set up the Space Force as the fifth branch of the US Armed Forces. Well, we did ask the White House, the Department of Defense, and Israeli officials to comment. So far, they have not responded to the NBC News request. And I wonder if they ever will. A lot of people digging into this now and wondering who this official is who's stepping forward, but apparently this person was referenced in the New York Times about 10 years ago as yes, indeed, working for the Israeli Space Agency, but this is kind of coming out of nowhere. Well, the retired general says the US and Israel have kept it from the public because quotes, humanity isn't ready and the aliens don't want to reveal themselves until humanity can evolve, he says, and understand what space really is. I must remind you that we are not making any of this up. These are the words of a man who was the head of Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years. He's retired now and has decided to share a well-kept secret with the world. It is trending, Galactic Federation. So if you see that, that's what this is about. To wow. be continued, we'll see if President Trump or anybody's actually asked about this mm. to find, get a quote on it or not. But either way, could be the biggest story ever, but also could be a complete and total joke. Well.